Hello everybody, in this exercise you will learn to program multi-column grid layouts using just a little bit of core JavaScript. A multi-column grid allows for boxes of varying heights to neatly stack across and down the page with no wasted space. It's an effect that cannot be rendered using tables or CSS floating elements, so you have to take a different approach to it. In the very next exercise we will cover CSS3 multi-column layouts that produce a similar layout with pure CSS. This way you can choose the approach that you like best because they have different behavior. Alright, let's take a look at the finished effect in a web page. And I'm going to give you two examples in the lesson code. This first example is the one we're going to actually build right now and you see this grid is centered in the web page and the width is hard coded at 900 pixels. You're also going to get this version that full screen width so it has dynamic widths to all of the boxes. That way it can be full screen in the browser window. So you'll get both of those examples in the lesson code, but the example that we're going to build right now in the video tutorial is this one. And this one is very similar. The JavaScript is exactly the same. The only difference is slight variations in the CSS. Okay, we're going to begin with some basic HTML and CSS already in place. And let me show you what it renders. So you can see I have my grid layout container here. This dashed gray line shows the border of that. And it's centered in the window. And then inside of that I have 15 boxes. All with different heights or varying heights. My goal is to make JavaScript reposition all of those boxes into a tight knit grid layout. Now I can go in here and try to float those boxes, like some people might think they can just float those boxes left and then they'll all fall into place, but let's see what happens. You see because of the varying heights it's a problem. If they were all the same height exactly it would be no problem, but we have varying heights so we can't use float. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and position these absolute. Now these divs, you can see I'm targeting the grid container up here in this rule and then I'm targeting all child divs within the grid container and giving them these properties. And these two rules are just for alternating the box colors and then this rule is affecting all of the div, the child divs inside of the grid containers child divs. So you can see down here I have the grid container and then I have all the child divs inside the grid container and then in each child div there's another child div inside of that one and I did that that way you can pad and margin and all of that stuff without messing up your layout you can just put your content within these divs here alright so let's take a look at what position absolute did when we changed it from float to position absolute see they're all stacked right in the same spot in the top left position and that's what I want so I want them to be positioned absolute because I'm going to use JavaScript to position all of those exactly where they need to go so let's go under the style tag let's go ahead and collapse all of that so it's not in our way and right under that I'm gonna put in a script element make sure I close that script element Now, right when the page loads I want to render my grid and whenever the page is resized I also want to render the grid. So if the user happens to resize my window, I also want to render the grid to make sure everything stays in place. So I'm going to put two listeners and they're on the window object. So we target the window object and we add event listener of load and we run a function called render grid on the load event. That means when the page first loads. Then on the window object again, we add an event listener of resize. So whenever the user happens to resize their window, we're going to render the grid. So all we need is function render grid sitting up top here. Type in function render grid, open close parentheses, opening curly brace, and closing curly brace. And you can choose to externalize this function if you like and put it in an external JavaScript file that your page can include. If you'd rather not have this script directly in your HTML or in your web page. Now the first thing I want to do inside of this function render grid is get an array that represents all of the child divs inside of this grid container. And I can do that easily in JavaScript 
by saying var blocks and blocks is going to represent the array of all of these child divs I can say document dot get element by ID grid container dot children so I use the dot children property on the grid container to access all of its children and all of its children are these 15 divs these divs inside of those would not be considered children of the grid container because these are children of the children these would be the grandchildren of the grid container so they're not going to be accessed within this array only these here and I want to access all of these because those are the blocks that are going to be repositioned and this array gives me access to all of them and all I'm going to do is loop over those with a for loop but before I run my for loop what I want to do is set some variables that my for loop is going to need the first variable is pad which you can really consider that margin space around each block but I just named it pad it's going to be the space in between each block the calls variable is short for columns and that's how many columns that you want your grid layout to have if you want to change it to a four column layout you just put a four there two column layout you just put a two we'll leave ours at three then we need another variable called new left and new top because in the for loop that we're going to place here in just a second we're going to put new left values and new top values for all of these little boxes and since they're positioned absolute in the CSS right here that means the top and left properties will allow us to easily move them around anywhere we want them so that's why you see new left and new top variables being established outside of the for loop okay now I'm gonna pop the for loop into place and explain it the best I can you can see there's not much code at all that makes all the magic happen and basically what this for loop is set up to do is access each element within the grid container all the child elements and position them according to the element that came before them so basically this element here is going to be positioned according to the position of this one and all the way down it goes like that so you sense where the position of this element is and you can put this element right next to it according to the size and location of this element and that's the fundamental logic of the application really so this for loop you can see is set up to iterate over the length of the blocks array and what I'm doing here is setting this var i to 1 normally you would see var i equals 0 in a for loop but I don't want the first element accessed this first div child doesn't need to be positioned because it's going to have the top left position by default let me show you what I mean let's render this and you can see it has the top left position by default you don't have to position box one but you do have to position all of the rest so you'll see this loop is gonna run only 14 times even though I have 15 boxes it's only gonna run 14 times because I'm skipping the zero index of the array which is the first element now this first little bit of logic in the for loop is saying if the I the incremental variable in the loop which it starts at one and then it increments each time so we say if I is divisible by calls which is three in our case then we're gonna set the new top the new top position for the next block and then we're gonna lay that block in its new top position now the reason why we're evaluating to see if I is divisible by three is so we can make new rows else if the I variable in the loop is not divisible by three we have to move the left position and the top position and this evaluation is in place just to make sure that we're not trying to position the top row because those on top let me show you what I mean in our case box one two and three are the top row none of those need a top repositioning they don't need to be pushed down at all but all of the rest do so this evaluation is in place to say only if it's not the top row then we're gonna give that box a new top position and we're all gonna give all of them a new left position and that's the whole script there's really not much to it now the way I get the new top and the new left values is by accessing the blocks so for instance the block coming through the array the blocking question that we're targeting through the loop is represented as blocks I now you can get to the block that's before it or after it by using simple math if I want to access the block before the block in question I would say 
I minus 1 right there. If I want to access the block two blocks before the block in question, I say I minus 2. So that's why you see up here, I'm saying I minus 3. Because all I'm doing is simply targeting the block that's three blocks before the block in question. And I'm getting its offset top property to see where it is. And I'm also getting its offset height to see how high it is. And I can use its offset top and offset height, add those together, and I know exactly where I need to put the following block under it. And I'm just adding pad here, which is 10 pixels. And that's really the most complex part, is getting these values. But you can see it's very simple. You just target whatever block before the one that you want. And that's how it works. And it renders this. Now this thing is fully customizable. You can customize the way this script operates. You can customize all of the CSS and use this sort of thing for occasions when you have divs that are all going to have different heights, but you want to put them in to a page and utilize the real estate on the page in the most efficient way possible. And remember, I'm also going to supply you with the full screen version, which is this one right here. It has dynamic width. So no matter what the width is of the user's window, it'll fit in there full. And this one has the same exact JavaScript. There's no difference at all in the JavaScript. It's just a little bit of variation in the CSS. And you can get to both of these examples by clicking the link for the lesson code in the description of this video. Okay, I hope you've enjoyed this exercise on building multi-column grids using core JavaScript. And don't forget in the very next exercise we're going to show pure CSS3 multi-column layouts that produce a similar effect but it has a cool auto content spillover feature into the next columns. So don't miss that one.